Okay, so thanks for finding the time and meeting me. Uh, congratulations for graduating successfully um, only two weeks ago, actually, no, one week ago, very recently. So um, you're the first one in the series of these little interviews I want to put on the on YouTube. So why don't you start by uh, telling us um, a little bit about background? How did you get passionate about biology and biotechnology? How did you end up choosing this particular master? Yeah, sure. Um, so I actually did my undergraduate at Imperial as well. So I did the biochemistry with management course um, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed um, all the lectures I had and I thought that Imperial was a really good university. Um, and when, the, when I was getting towards the end of my degree, I realised I wanted to go a little bit further. Um, and I realised because I took some biotech modules as part of my undergraduate, I realised that I was more interested in this sort of aspect of the degree. Um, so I started looking around at the various different biotech masters out there at the moment. Um, and there aren't that many actually, quite surprisingly, but um, the Imperial one really stood out to me because of the applied side of it. Because I had done that management year as part of my undergraduate degree, I realized that I was really interested in not only science, but also the commercial side of things. You know, how can you take a technology and take it out to the world? What's the process of doing that? Um, so for that reason, the Applied Biotech Masters really stood out to me because it's not just science, it's also how can that science be applied to everyday problems, What's, uh, what problems can it solve? Um, yeah, so then I went on to apply for the course and uh, yeah, I definitely really enjoyed it. Good. And you also have a somehow a kind of peculiar story because I understand that rather early during the course, uh, together with uh, three other classmates, you decided yeah. to kickstart a entrepreneur activity, like you had actually a startup, a biotech startup. So what you want to tell us a little bit, how things went? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, yeah, that was the three of my course mates, um, Estelle, Max and Sim. Um, and it sort of stemmed out of one of the modules we did on antimicrobial resistance. Um, and, you know, we were all quite interested in it. And then uh, Sim kind of came up with this idea. Um, and, you know, it was it sort of was just sort of a casual discussion, like, oh, you know, could this potentially turn into a business venture? Um, and then we kind of got more and more serious about it, started exploring options, started exploring the science side of it initially, looking for papers, um, you know, is there a basis for this technology we want to bring out? And then uh, we started applying for some competitions quite early on. Um, so then we applied for one, which is Re Reload Greece, uh, which is a young entrepreneurship program. And there were hundreds of applicants and we actually went on to win that. Um, and yeah, it was just like a really good opportunity. And I think that really shows that everyone on the masters is, uh, is definitely interested in the applied side of it. So it's a really good environment to nurture something like this. Um, and I'm sure there'll be another video with uh, the startup itself and they can tell, tell you a little bit more about what actually happened. But. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is this something that you expected you'd be doing or is something that just came out of nowhere? Um, well, I don't think I ever went into the masters thinking, oh, I, I have a go at starting a business. Um, but I guess, like, like I was saying, the environment it is. So, you know, it's an applied course. Everyone there has got a kind of similar mindset in that they're not just interested in pure uh, academic research. They're also interested in some kind of commercial aspect or, you know, how can it solve a real problem? Um, so I wasn't... I wouldn't say I went in expecting to be able to start a business. I knew I'd have opportunities. I knew there was an entrepreneurship module. Um, but I think it's just the environment you're in, the people you're around. Um, it's really quite energetic and, you know, um, things like this can come out of it. Right. So then I ask you a question related to the fact that you actually did your undergrad at Imperial. Uh, so you were mm -hmm. familiar with the place and not with the department, in fact. Did you find a difference in the environment moving from undergrad to postgrad? Oh yeah, definitely. So my undergraduate degree, you know, I was in classes of 150 students and then to go to a master's where there's, I think there was maybe around 35, 36 of us. Um, so firstly, the size of the class is uh, dramatically different. And as a result, the way the lectures are taught are also different. In undergrad, I found it was all generally just a lecture 
lecturing at us. Whereas with the masters, it was a more dynamic environment. There were questions being asked. It was more of a discussion rather than just straight lecturing. Um, and as a result, it also meant that we were able to engage with the lecturers more and you know, start a dialogue with them. Uh, for example, as part of this startup, uh, we were talking with Mark Dion quite a bit um, and we had quite a few meetings with him. So I'd say that, um, that that's one aspect of it, the sort of more dynamic relationship you have with the professors. And then the other side is also that there's not as much of an emphasis on examination and grades. Um, and this is something that's really stressed from the beginning that you know, the aim of this master's isn't to get a distinction or a merit. The aim of this master's is to learn skills of how to be a good scientist. Um, so, you know, we, our first exam was until January. We didn't really get any sort of number grades at all throughout the year. We were just told you, you got a distinction for this or a merit. I mean, the emphasis was more on learning and nurturing um, the sort of areas you're interested in. So there were also a lot of um, coursework assignments that weren't actually assessed. So presentations and group working opportunities where you just got to explore an aspect of the module that you found interesting um, without the sort of pressure of, oh, it, it, it's worth this percentage of my grade at the end. It's just a, an opportunity for you to really um, explore the areas you're interested in. Right, I, I can tell you by experience that actually the students who do not stress too much about grades and marks are the ones who do the best. And you, yeah. ended, you ended up being top of your class, in fact. So <laughs> I'm very happy that you actually found that aspect, uh, you know, of learning before grading. Yeah. Okay, so um, what is next for you now? What are you starting or what are you about to start? Or? Yeah, so um, like I'm three weeks into um, a training contract as a patent attorney. So um, I've been interested in patent law for quite some time. Um, and, you know, it's something that actually came up a lot throughout this course, you know, the importance of intellectual property. Um, so, yeah, so I've just started at a firm called Stratodon uh, and it's going really well so far. Um, enjoying it. Oh, cool. All right. So is it something that you always thought, you know, was in the back of your mind from the beginning? Yeah, I'd say that um, although I love science, I'm not really someone who... I see myself as sort of a lab bent and more, I enjoy reading about the technology. I like the sort of, once the technology is nice and ready, how are we gonna get it to the market? That sort of side of it. Um, so yeah, so I've been interested in patent law for some time and actually through um, the innovation talks, which are a part of the course, um, I contacted one of the sort of lecturers who gave a talk, uh, Dino, and because throughout his talk, he was always mentioning, oh, IP was so important for this, IP was important for that. So I just reached out to him and said, you know, I'm actually interested in going into patent law. Uh, can you like give me any recommendations? Can you introduce me to anyone? And he actually introduced me to his attorney. And through that, um, I got some work experience, which was really valuable when it came to applying for jobs. Okay, cool. And so, okay, so um, last question I say, uh, do you have any, maybe a bit too early to ask this, but do you have any particular memories that you think will be with you for, you know, a longer time after this, you know, graduating? Yeah. Um, well, I'd say like, rather than memories, maybe perhaps sort of highlights of the course for me. Right. Um, I really, really enjoyed the dissertation aspect. I thought it was a really good um, opportunity to essentially specialize in whatever it is you wanted, because uh, you have sort of complete control of that. You can pick any topic you want and you write this sort of 2000 word dissertation. Um, and, you know, I decided to do mine on RNA vaccines because they felt quite topical at the time, but, you know, there were people doing them on, you know, sleep and addiction and just some really interesting topics. So I think it, that was a really, a really big highlight for me because it was just a month where I could look into any topic I wanted based on the skills I had gained from the masters. Um, so that's definitely something that stood out. And then I'd say another sort of highlight is just, you know, that sort of dynamic relationship I was talking about. The fact that, you know, um, you get to sort of engage with lecturers in a different manner compared to how you did as an undergraduate. It's more sort of uh, a one-to-one -one relationship rather than, you know, being in a class of 150. Um, yeah, so I'd really recommend, yeah, you know, if you're on the course now, even though it's online, try, try and get in contact with lecturers who, you know, you, you found their lectures interesting. Um, start up a dialogue, you know, it's a really good opportunity um, and you might gain something from it. And even, you know, the class itself, um, everyone who's on this course is, you know, very bright, very talented, you know, quite like-minded individuals. So I'd really recommend getting to know your colleagues um, and really, you know, taking the most of this opportunity you have right now. So you made good friends as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
I haven't seen them in a while because of all the lockdown, but uh, we've been having like Zoom calls and, you know, pub quizzes and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's uh, nice. Everyone's life these days. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Yasmin. Thanks a lot for your time. This was very useful and nice of you. Yeah, no problem. Have a rest of, good rest of the day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.